we have learned that the Achilles heel of every computer system is the incredibly long amount of time it takes to move a block from disk into memory. And every time we want to do anything to data, we've got to move it into memory. And that's the idea behind the columnar here. When somebody writes a query and says, hey, just select EMPNO from the employee table, they're just looking for one column. Instead of having to move the entire block, they just move the EMPNO container. And it's so much thinner and less movement involved that this really has a lot less traffic on the network. It's so much faster to move in. It leaves so much more room in memory for other things to happen. In a lot of environments, you just can't beat this kind of design. What if they asked for two columns in the query? I would like to select the employee number and the salary from this table. The parsing engine is going to be smart enough to know that this is a column or table and it tells every amp, I want you to move your first container and your last container into memory simultaneously and that's how columnar is going to work. We're selecting the last name from the table where the employee number is equal to 1001. Those containers will move into memory and then they'll match them up by their row position. We'll see that in our next slide. We select last name from the employee table where employee number is equal to 1001. Notice here, they've got to move in the employee container to find the employee that's 1001. When they do that, then they move in the last name container and they can see that 1001 was the first row in this container. It knows on this same amp that the last name will be the very first row in that container. And that's the way it works. That's why everything matches up in each container. That's why when you delete a row, or if you were to do something of that nature, Teradata would say, hey, listen, don't be physically deleting that and shifting stuff around. That might go awry and then things get difficult. So they keep everything at the same row level. So if you get a container and you happen to be on row 99, you're on row 99 in every other container to build that entire row back. Here you can see the relative row numbers in each one of these containers. This particular amp holds three rows, five containers. More than likely, all the other amps are going to have three rows, but they'll definitely have five containers. So it's uniform across all of these amps. Each one of these containers has a relative row number placed in front of it. So once again, if you say, I want the third row here, you can get the third row in each container and you know you have the real row. The most difficult thing for me to understand about columnar on Teradata is that even though we're in a sense parallel processing columns, that's not really what's going on here. We're giving an amp the entire row and then that amp breaks that up into five separate containers if we've got five separate columns. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings.